Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Willow. Hi, Julie. Amy, Chris. Pam, Miss Pam. <laughs> like Joe was here too. Awesome. Y'all can talk to each other if you want. <laughs> or did you make everybody mute, I guess? <laughs> yeah, okay. I can un I can unmute. Hold on. No, it's okay. <laughs> Just if anybody wants to talk to each other. <laughs> well, this is Nicole, and I want to like everyone to know I'm having dinner. I made stuffed peppers. Yay. Nicole. You have some to share? <laughs> Pam, I'll see you tomorrow in class. I know, but still, I was going to have you share. Well, okay, hold on. Let me show you a video, a very <laughs> short video. How do I flip my screen? Okay, I'm eating off a paper plate like an animal. Uh, it's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know. This is like the most, this is a riveting, it's a riveting conversation to have for the town hall meeting. <laughs> but... Wait, Wes is still there. Okay. A female. I just wanted to say hello to everyone since nobody else seemed to be talking. So, hello. I'm going to go back to eating. <laughs> Bye. Hey, good. Looks like we have some people hopping on. So, are we good on Facebook, Ivy? Yep. It's, I'm circling right now. So, it should be popping up. All right. Did everybody see my screen with the big, lovely pictures of? Wes and I. <laughs> I can just see you. Yes. Okay. Just thinking, Wes, we probably look a lot better in those headshots than we do in real life tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to disagree. I'm going to disappoint. But, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, okay. We're live. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, you know, it's been a nice way to do this virtually, even though it may not be the way of choice. Um, I think we'll be able to get the message out to more people. And um, I did a presentation similar to this for our board last year, and uh, we just talked about trying to be more transparent and more open with our um, supporters and families and donors. And so we wanted to share with you everything that we feel like um, went well this year uh, amidst the pandemic amidst a crazy year that it was. We feel like there were still lots of things that were wonderful and that we um, did well. So I am gonna probably move through these slides pretty quickly. There's probably more on them than I, I'm not gonna read them to you. We're gonna share this presentation. We're gonna record it. So you can always go back and look at things um, and follow up for questions. But um, we just wanted to share again, the highlights of the year and then we'll open it up to question. So um, again, we have been very blessed to have uh, Dr. Wes Sublett as our board president for the last um, year or so. And I've been never been more grateful for his clinical oh. advice <laughs> throughout this year. I definitely had to lean on that quite a bit right. more than planned. Um, so you all I have clinical questions for him as well. So we can talk about strategic plan, we can talk about DSL and what's going well and what's not at the end with questions, or you can also talk to Wes about clinical questions as well. Uh, I told him to bring his uh, clinical hat as well. Um, so without further ado, Wes, do you want to say hello? Oh, well, uh, first of all, thank you all for joining us tonight virtually. Um, this is a, um, you know, a good update about what is ongoing at uh, DSL. Um, I saw Jill in the yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, this is going to be a good update for families and for members. Um, thank you all for being patient during this unprecedented time. We have done our best as a board and as an organization to keep services going, 
to keep touches with members and to continue to provide the services that our members and families really need. And uh, kudos to Julie and her staff in accomplishing that during a, there is no description for 2020. So um, I'm not gonna take any more time. I'm gonna let Julie present what she is gonna present. Um, and just thank you all to, per, to the families and to our members for supporting us uh, during this crazy year. Julie, it's all yours, and then we'll open it up for discussion. All right, so get back on the screen here. So of course, okay, here we go. Now I can click through. So again, just highlights of 2020. Um, as far as our, our board of trustees, we have a board of 14 right now. We're definitely still looking to grow that board, but we have four new board members this year. Um, that we came on board, so we're excited about that. Um, always recruiting, Danny Slayton, one of our parents, is kind of in charge of our governance and recruiting nominations. So he's been calling some of you who may have indicated you've been interested to be on the board, but there's also lots of committees, um, both board committees and event committees. So um, be looking forward to me reaching out um, if I know you have certain interests and if you're interested, reach out to us, please, to get involved um, at those levels. And then uh, we have some new virtual board dashboards and reports. So we're just trying to get our information cleaner and clearer for the board. Um, and then we started implementing that strategic plan that we created last year. And um, you know, it was, we kind of laughed in March because we hadn't really looked at it after all of the COVID started. But we actually have really made a lot more progress on those initiatives than we thought because so many of them were focused around um, communication, uh, inclusion, you know, flexibility, spreading out our message regionally and, and COVID offered us a lot um, of options to, to meet those needs. So um, I'm not gonna click into the strategic plan right now, but you can do that when you're um, on the report and, and look closer at it. If you have questions about it later, please feel free um, to bring them up. Technology, again, that was one thing that we pivoted quickly on last year and then this year jumped in even more. So definitely proved um, very valuable after we all started working from home. Um, we really would not have been able to do that had we not had changed our technology, updated our technology um, quickly. So that was a, a blessing. Uh, we have two databases. We have updated our fundraising database and then we also now have a member database where we're gonna be tracking more um, member specific, family specific information. Um, and this is gonna be where um, some of our members know when they came to ADA in person, they got to click in um, digitally now. They'll clock in digitally and clock out digitally. And this is going to be really valuable. We're not trying to change things and make things difficult for anybody, but it's honestly, to me, it's about safety and, and knowing emergency contacts, being able to know who's where, when, and who we're responsible for. Um, so we're really excited about that technology um, that we're working on. And again, COVID has offered us lots of um, time to be uploading old documents and dating things and getting all the information we need in those databases. Um, prop, uh, shout out to Carly Thompson, who's our billing coordinator here. She uh, scanned and uploaded over 175 binders of information that we had on shelves here at DSL. So um, just huge, huge steps in the right direction, getting things not only you know on the paper, but they're digital as well. So we can keep up with you guys, let you know when your plan of cares are due or things like that. Um, just make sure we're providing you the best services that we can. So that's exciting. You guys probably have seen in my in our weekly updates or um, things like that, we've been doing some facility updates, which again, COVID has allowed us because the building has been empty. And although I hate it that way, and it's very quiet and sad, <laughs> um, we have been able to update some things. Um, this is a before and after picture of our lounge. Uh, and it was originally used for different things. We're now looking to use it more for our aging population. Um, and we needed more soothing colors. We needed a one color floor. Um, we needed a doorway to get through to the kitchen and the bathroom. Um, but lots of things have happened. Almost all of this was donated. We paid very little for any of these things and it's very exciting. We can't wait to share it um, with our members when they come back. We're also getting the same flooring through, put out um, through all the main areas of the building. Um, so they will all match. And again, we learned from um, our, some of our aging members that that change of color in the floor, that brown to light brown, or dark brown to light brown, made him think it was an obstacle and really started to become an issue that we never were aware of, you know, when we laid the floor back in 2011 or um, built the building. So um, it's just offered us the opportunity to update to help our members um, 
be able to get around better. Uh, we redesigned a couple of the tutoring rooms. They just needed a fresh update. We have a great new Harry Potter tutoring room. And we have a new concrete patio right outside the window there at the lounge that um, one of our families helped us put in as well. So, and then you also probably all heard the story about the vans, that the vans were vandalized. And so we are in the process of putting some bright motion lights outside, out back um, to make sure things are safer. And then also looking at some kind of structure for our vans moving forward. But exciting things happening around the building. Um, our team is, had a great retreat early this year, pre-COVID, these pictures obviously um, were taken, but we've got a great team. Some of the things happening, uh, Dr. Jenny Kimes is now a certified mental health integrative medicine provider. So if she wasn't wearing enough hats already, she's now got this new certification that um, just makes her um, a wealth of information for our members. Um, Zach and Brianna have both become certified employment service professionals, which uh, that just takes us one step ahead of a lot of the other support employment um, agencies that they both have those certifications. So we're excited about that. Um, Nicole's on the Association of Fundraising Professionals Board, which is exciting. My whole team kind of got a restructure of roles and expectations, which um, everyone was honestly really excited about. And then um, we also implemented traction, EOS traction, if anybody's familiar with that, it's just um, a way, again, of tracking goals and progress. So as a leadership team, we're really keeping track of our data and making sure that everybody has goals and is moving toward goals um, consistently. And finally, on this list, um, as you guys, I'm sure have been hearing from our messaging that um, Brianna, one of our staff members, is in the hospital with COVID. Um, she had surgery today. We're hoping that she won't lose much of her feet, but it is a possibility. So they're just, COVID has not been friendly to our staff lately. And now Lisa Darst, who's now Lisa Lewis, is also in the hospital. So please just continue to pray for our staff and obviously members who are dealing with COVID, but um, it, it hasn't slowed up on um, hitting us hard this year. So programming obviously is the, the meat of what we do and we're excited that we have 18 new babies, um, 890 first step visits. So because first steps has been virtual um, most, most of the year, we have just two DIs right now, Jenny um, and Dawn, and they have done themselves the majority of these 890 visits just virtually. Um, a lot of that is usually travel time. And so when that's taken out of the equation, they're able to provide more services. So that is, um, a huge deal. We did hire Abby as a Southern Indiana coordinator. She's been helping us out with some programming there and offering new things. Um, we hired Susan Tieford was our adult education manager and now she's our school age manager. She's really excited about the new role. And as you guys may have seen, we did some NTI support. We had 28 students do virtual C this year, our summer camp. Um, there's two colleges, new colleges on board that our members can now um, participate in programming. We don't have any members waiting for a tutor at the moment, which is great. Sometimes we have a waiting list. And, um, and for career, career solutions, we're slowly inching back up to members working. So there's 36 of our usual 63 supported employment members back at work. So and again, shout out to that team, having Brianna out in the hospital and then Jasmine left us to go back to school. Um, so Zach, Shelly, Kristen have all been stepping up and really um, picking up a lot of work working hard with our members and getting them back to work. So we're excited about that. Quick, fun video, just <laughs> with this little Finn. <laughs> Participating in the Boogie Down crew early on. <laughs> so uh, love that. I love all the virtual videos. We have another one here of our toddler group. <laughs> the toddlers have really jumped onto virtual programming a lot more than we thought so it's been wonderful and I know as a mom sometimes it's a lot easier to get on virtually than come in person so we hope to continue that um, even beyond the pandemic and um, some of the services so obviously we'll go into more virtual DSL you guys are all probably very familiar with that um, we've had other 400 family support consultations throughout all of our um, services we are working on some medical outreach planning and an advo advocacy campaign that's coming up quickly. Um, we have a little bit a residential partnership opportunity coming up um, that we don't know if it's gonna go anywhere yet, but they uh, reached out to us. 
So there's some exciting things happening there. That's um, part of our long-term board committee. So if you're interested in, in that um, topic, we'd love for you to get involved with that committee. Um, there's been 66 psych consultations, 900 hours of behavioral support, and we did um, 12 plus, I believe, educational sessions for families this year. Um, we are gonna have some more sessions um, in conjunction on uh, guardianship, ABLE accounts, um, all those things that can get confusing uh, starting early next year too. So let us know what programming you wanna hear. And this uh, picture over here is Abby doing sign language class with some of our um, adult members and they are loving that. And she's, she does such a great job with them. Uh, communications, so if you guys don't know Ivy, Ivy wave <laughs> wherever you are. Um, but Ivy was hired on as our communications coordinator early in the year and I could not be more grateful that we asked for that position um, last year to bring that on board because as you all know during COVID communications has been that much more important. We've had all kinds of communications um, happening. Um, we also launched a podcast so Carly um, and Ethan on staff helped us launch a podcast. If you haven't tuned into the Kinder, Kindness Warrior podcast please do. Uh, we really are trying to share those episodes as much as we can because there, a lot of them have information that will be useful in 30 years and today. So we hope to keep adding new topics um, and really, again, showcasing our members. They always have a co-host. Carly always has a co-host that's a member um, for the, for each podcast. And that way they, they get to showcase their um, talents and stories. And then we also get to talk about topics that um, those who may not know about Down syndrome or who have a family member with Down syndrome can benefit from. So um, Facebook followers keep growing. Again, that's just an easy way for us to reach a large uh, group of people. We have over 41,000 people following us on Facebook. Um, our mom's group now has over 377 members on Facebook. Again, um, for those of you who are involved in it, it's a great just community building for our moms um, and support. And then again, kudos to having a communications coordinator and Ivy doing a great job. We have, as you know, daily virtual emails and texts now. Um, weekly family updates are consistently coming out on Fridays. And then monthly supporter emails um, happen each month. Then finally, the um, Kindness Warrior magazine is also our biannual magazine, which I hope you guys all saw the latest edition. You should have gotten it in your mailboxes the last week or so. Um, we have our uh, our citizen of the year on here. Jill, uh, Jill was waving earlier. <laughs> Proud mom up there. Um, but all of our award winners who we didn't get to celebrate in person are, are featured in the magazine um, this time. So we're excited to share those with you. And it, we're always looking for stories for the Kindness Wear magazine for all of these things. Um, we just want to keep sharing the story. That was one thing that um, in our branding and our PR moving forward is really important. I think I like the idea of sharing the new story of Down syndrome. That, you know, it's not the story that people got decades ago when, um, you know, the outlook was bleak or that they didn't think they would be able to do a lot. And we know that our members are incredibly capable and give us more back than, you know, than we give them. So um, we want to make sure we're telling that story. So if you have stories to, you, you know, want to share, we would love to hear them. We try to keep up um, with everybody. And then engagement, um, we are sending member birthday postcards. We hope that everybody's getting them. Send us your birthday if you're not. Um, and thank you to Katie Grant, who's on here, who helped sponsor those postcards for us. Um, so it's not a cost to us to send those out. But again, we just want our members to know we're loving on them. Um, I'm sure everyone remembers the Kindness is Not Canceled campaign. That was a really fun way for us to just, again, reach out to our families and hopefully bring you all a smile um, in this rough, rough time. Uh, we launched a spirit store, which um, things are on sale now. I'm sure you're, you've seen information about that. We did our first welcome new baby shower, which you can see the picture of. This is one of our favorite pictures, from, my favorite pictures from the year, of <laughs> all these babies in one place. Um, but we were able to welcome new families and hopefully we'll be able to do that again soon, do some more potlucks and getting to know each other. The fall festival was again, one kind of in-person thing we were able to do. Um, we had a great time. We've secured a Ignite team through Leadership Louisville. So um, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the Leadership Louisville Ignite program, but we have about eight uh, young professionals who are gonna be working pretty much for us for the next six months. So they have, I've given them a project of doing an awareness and advocacy campaign. And um, they just presented their initial ideas to me today and we're really, really excited about what they're gonna do. So um, if anybody wants to help out with that as well, they'd love to have more resources to reach out to that know about DSL. 
Um, so yeah, so more community partners, book club meetings, dad's night outs, mom night outs. We did start our sib squad. So for siblings, um, we have a group of siblings who has a group on Facebook and they're also trying to meet virtually. So if you have siblings of your members who are interested in being involved with that, please let us know. Um, and then 33 new volunteers. I think that's pretty strong, honestly, for virtual volunteers. Um, we got quite a few this year who are doing virtual tutoring, even when there wasn't a lot going on. So exciting. Virtual DSL, just a few numbers. Again, I won't read all this one, but um, my favorite one is that we've had over 150 boogie down practices virtually with over 6,546 logons to people to come dance. <laughs> and so we know we've heard amazing feedback from a lot of our parents about Boogie Down Crew, but um, that's just been a really great way to keep our members moving and keep them looking forward to something every day. So um, we hope that if you haven't had a chance, if you're not a member family or your supporter or donor and would like to log on for one of our Boogie Down practices, you can reach out to us and we can let you know how to do that because we also we don't share that with a lot of people. It's a, definitely a way to brighten your day when you're having a rough one. Um, I got on to one of the ADA classes last week just to hear caroling, Christmas caroling from our members, and it really does brighten your day. Um, and then we had you know, two hours of AD, 200 hours of ADA. Um, average attendance for Boogie Down Crew has been over 40 um, people, probably closer to 50. And we've had four um, individuals with Down syndrome from other states join us for, for things throughout this COVID pandemic. So it's really been our new tagline we've been sharing is serving locally and sharing globally. So that's really kind of a testament that we can share beyond just our region um, with a lot of the information that we have. There's a little glimpse of the Kindness is Not Canceled campaign. It's so much fun. My sign's still in my yard. It's holding strong, <laughs> probably until the next snow. Um, in fundraising, so we grossed over $748,000 this year. We were only 18% under our pre-COVID goal, which um, just a huge shout out to Nicole and her team. That, that is way below the national average for fundraise, for nonprofits this year. A lot of them are seeing a lot more um, decline in fundraising than that. So we are very, very grateful. Um, one of the ways that we've been trying to get more sustainability with our donors and um, keeping them close and engaged is the Kindness Warrior Club. So that's the monthly donations of $21 a month. And um, we have 34 of those right now. My goal was 50 this year. So I have a little bit of time left to try to get some more monthly donors. But um, again, they get the cards that our members made, the all occasion cards and they sign on. And they're just another way for us to engage that group of people and, um, and get them involved. So we're excited about that program. We've had 645 new donors, 172 that upgraded. Um, and then we did get a $250,000 almost in PPP loan, which helped us keep our staff on board for half of the year <laughs> um, considering. So we usually take in, we're taking in probably uh, less than 20% of what we normally do monthly without being in person um, for our services. So it's definitely something that we're feeling and we're having to really cut down for next year to make plans for that. Um, and we are uh, just grateful for any support to keep us going. And um, we did hire a new database coordinator and a grant writer. Um, our grant writer who was here, uh, if you knew her, uh, she retired this summer. So we have a new grant writer on board who has a ton of experience. We're super excited to have her. But uh, we, you know, we just keep pushing on to it. Um, we do know this year that we, we've already decided for our committees that our first two events, the fashion show and the gala will most likely be virtual. Um, next year. So we are, you know, tentatively hoping we'll be back in person by June. I'm hoping that's conservative, but it was really kind of what we built our plan around. So right now, um, the gala and the fashion show will be virtual. So we'll just go ahead and start planning for that. And if you have any great ideas on how to make that more exciting um, and get people more engaged, we would love um, you to get involved with that as well. There's another glimpse of how to get involved with the Kindness Wear Club. When you get the presentation, you can click on this and it takes you to another page that tells you more about our um, like Amazon Smile, Kroger card rewards, easy ways that don't cost you anything that you can also support us. Um, so there's lots of ways that, that you can help. These are mainly for our family resources, but there's exciting things that are happening at the national and global level. Um, so I'm on the board of, of um, uh, 
the global, I'm sorry, Down Syndrome Global Foundation. And um, they have been working hard on the adult healthcare guidelines, which just came out recently. Um, again, there were never adult healthcare guidelines before for individuals with Down Syndrome. So this gives you a link to that, tells you a little bit more about that. Um, another organization just launched a caregiver helpline. So we know that this time has been hard and it's even um, harder for those with kids at home and those that you're you know, caring for at home. So this is a caregiver helpline, a link here that you can call and, and get support when you need it, which is I think a wonderful resource for, again, for our families. Um, DSC to you is a Down syndrome clinic to you. We have $10 off coupons to use this service. So this service was done um, by a lot of, a few of the same doctors that did the adult healthcare guidelines, but it's throughout the lifespan. What it is, is basically a resource uh, mainly for your doctor, for your physicians. So we all, I think all know those who've been watching the mom's page, we have a very few physicians in the area who know our patients and know um, those with Down syndrome and can uh, really understand their diagnosis and what they're gonna be facing as they get older into their adulthood. And so these, uh, this DSC to you and the healthcare guidelines are things you can print out and give to your doctor. Uh, DSC to you, it's $40, I believe, to do it once and you can do it once a year. So um, say before you go to your annual appointment, you go on, you, um, you can get the coupons from us so that it's cheaper. You fill out all the information about your member and then it, it comes up with a document that you can print out and take to your doctor. Um, that tells them in doctor language what they need to know about your mem your member, your individual. So it's really a neat um, a neat thing. You can reach out to myself or Ivy. Um, I think she created a form that you can fill out just to, with your email saying that you want a coupon code, and then you can use the coupon code for that and um, and get that print out. And then the COVID question and answer site is through LuMind and NDSS. Um, they both are just keeping a really close um, eye on everything COVID and Down syndrome. And so that is a great link to go to for any questions that you have on that. This is just a fun kindness warrior pledge. It kind of came from um, the values that my staff came up with for our own staff. Um, but we also thought that it went well with our kindness warriors and our members. And so we're going to kind of try to start sharing this with the members and having them learn this pledge as well so we can all say it together when we're together and um, it's on one of our new t-shirts in the spirit store too but it's we care we learn we have fun we don't give up and i think that's what makes us all kindness warriors right all right guys <laughs> all right so i went really fast it was a lot of information but um carly i went i guess or ivy let people ask questions. Wes, do you have to add anything before we just open it up to questions? Um, none at this time. And I would just like to, it sounds negative to say that we're probably not going to be back in person before June. Obviously, uh, the organization, D, uh, DSL is able to pivot um, just like we were able to pivot this, this year um, during the pandemic and change when things change. And so, um, I, as a board and as an organization, I would say we're very hopeful to get people back um, in some form or fashion prior to June 1. But um, uh, in my opinion, I would say that um, 2021 is still going to be, it's going to be a better year than 2020, but it will be a different year uh, nonetheless. And so um, we have to protect our members, protect our staff and um, but yet still continue to provide services to all of our members and families. So. All right. Ivy, are you still there to unmute us? Yeah, I can do it. Yep, and actually I've enabled it so if someone has a question, they can unmute themselves. Okay, perfect. Also, but if there's any trouble, I'm here to help too. So if you have any questions, um, about anything we presented on or anything, just like I said, Wes has got his clinical hat ready too. So um, COVID-ish, feel free to, to ask away. Julie, I do, I've got a list of grant opportunities that I have, age, this is Mona Wilkerson, yeah, I that I have worked with over the years, many years. Wonderful. And I've got that in an Excel sheet. 
uh, I will send that to you tomorrow. That would be wonderful. Thank There's you. opportunities there. There's another opportunity. I've got a, a history of working with the Louisville Bar Foundation. Mm -hmm. And they, of course, I was furloughed from the Zoom group in September. And so I'm still working with the Disability Mental Inquest Office. And Jeff Beam, the director of the Louisville Bar Foundation, personally reached out to me. So, uh, of course, we've missed the first grant opportunity that was had to be due in December. But uh, I would be happy to work with you to get a grant submitted before June for the next fiscal year. That'd be great. Uh, that, you know, providing uh, DSL with an opportunity to get grant funding on that. So, wow. you know, I've worked with different attorneys. I've worked with many judges down there at the uh, Disability Mental Inquest Office. So I'll get with you on that to make that happen. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sandy is our new, um, Sandy Bowling is our new grant writer. So I will definitely make sure we all get together on that. Okay. Yeah. So, cause I've written this grant many times, you know, reached out to refugees <laughs> and, you know, different immigrants. And so anyway, yeah, I mean, I've already got a template put together. If my name attached to it, then uh, I'll be happy to present that. Okay. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. I'd just like to say one thing, um, and I'll probably cry while I do it, but just, you know, it's the COVID cry. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, early on this year when everything went upside down, we are so lucky to have you all because within just a few days, Carly, starts boogie down crew on zoom and you know it really saved our family because jill does everything and suddenly she had nothing you know and i had to leave her home by herself for two weeks because i still had my employees at my at my work and jill figured out the zoom by herself got <laughs> on there was carly i knew the time she was with carly i didn't have to worry about her you know, so thank you all for saving us. Thank you. Thank and you. now she does ADA. She does the special ADA with Ethan. She started tutoring today, which went wonderfully. Hi. And hooray, hooray. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And we love Jill. I remember working with her iPad and getting her all set up in the first few weeks. So <laughs> we, we got her yeah. on every day. <laughs> she did great. Yeah, because I had no idea, and <laughs> I wasn't even with her, so she was on her own, but yeah. thank God she's a technological kid. She made it work. She made it work. Yeah, so anyway, thank, thank you. you thank you. We know Carly's amazing, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? Are there anything? I know that I said something um, in the group. And I don't think I'm the only one talking to, you know, we got the clinical side of everything with COVID and all that. I keep going back and forth about when the vaccine is pushed out. Does anyone know, Julie, are there, have there been any studies done with individuals with Down syndrome who have had the heart surgeries before, who might have some of these other medical issues going on and how safe it is for them? Because, I mean, I got to get my kid out of here and get her in school, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just listening to something today, and I'll let Wes really answer that question, but the, yeah, I don't think there's been enough studies done, for sure. A pediatric vaccine is definitely further out. Is that right, Wes, than an adult vaccine? Yeah, so this is um, as of five o'clock tonight. So um, obviously the first um, emergency authorization um, meeting happened today by a committee uh, that actually gives an advisor to the FDA um, for emergency use of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, and in that study, or in the study for the Pfizer vaccine, um, <clears throat> it was down to tw age 12. Um, and there were individuals, not necessarily those that have Down syndrome, because it was um, not, uh, at least that data is not published as of yet, but people that did have uh, multiple um, health um, 
issues, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and so forth, that our members do um, uh, un unfortunately have comorbid conditions that they face during life. Um, they were included in the study. Um, now, um, you know, as far as emergency authorization, this does not open up uh, the vaccine availability to everybody as of yet. And so um, it is not going to be approved in children um, for quite some time. And so, um, and there's going to be other vaccines that come along as well. Um, and so as of today, it's approved, uh, uh, off, the emergency authorization was down to 16. Um, but again, that's just the recommendation to the FDA and the FDA makes the final determination. And then the, the CDC will publish a guideline on who should receive the vaccine because the next, uh, the allocation and the limited supply is going to um, determine who gets the vaccine sooner than later. Um, and so while we want every member, every individual to be accessible to the vaccine, um, in my opinion, what I would say is this. So it's not gonna happen today, it's not gonna happen tomorrow that we're gonna have accessible uh, vaccine. Um, if I had a child or an adult that um, uh, has DS and also has other comorbid conditions, I would discuss that with your healthcare um, professional, but in my opinion, I would um, give that vaccine. Um, because the immune system, which as an immunologist, that's my specialty, um, you know, our members do uh, experience, depending on, because of um, uh, their genetics, they are more likely to have other um, either autoimmune diseases or cardiac um, defects. But it doesn't really um, preclude them from having an immune response that would be similar to someone that doesn't have um, Down syndrome. And so, again, that would be someone that you would need to talk to your healthcare professional. But in my opinion, um, if it was my family, I would recommend, when available, to get that vaccine. But I, I think you're, everybody on the call tonight is going to have a lot more time to hear that information and to make that decision. You heard less about the list or anything? Or that's gonna be, or who's gonna handle that? Can you repeat that question? Yeah, who, yeah who sorry. Who has uh, the list? Like, so we were told by our pediatrician and Sloan's doctors in Cincinnati to get on the list. So they wrote our referrals to get on the vaccine list. But no one seems to be able to point us in the right direction of where this list is. Yeah, there, there's no list. <laughs> um, I, I mean, there's no list as of yet. Um, and again, there's, so what can I say definitely? There's no approved vaccine. The emergency authorization gives a very limited scope um, to use the vaccine. And so at least with the Pfizer vaccine, it will not be... Um, so it's not gonna be submitted for, for what they call kind of um, uh, BAL, um, so biological authorization license, which would be what a typical vaccine goes through until April. So the emergency use is, is very special, but the typical, um, hey Jill, the typical person that gets, uh, when we go through vaccine approval process, that process will not start until April. At least that was what was said on the FDA call. So as far as like lists that are being made or um, in, um, in pediatrics or children, who's gonna have access to vaccine, that's gonna be, um, that is yet to be determined. So I, I would not, as far as, um, who is participating in clinical trials in pediatrics, I would think, and don't um, hold me to this, but I would think that Cincinnati Children's probably is going to participate in the pediatric 
and adolescent trials just because they have um, one of their key infectious disease yeah. vaccine experts is actually on the FDA um, advisory and has been very active within vaccine research. And so it would be very surprising. So as far as clinical research lists, yeah, that would probably be the, you, so everybody can go to clinicaltrials.gov and search COVID vaccine and find uh, potential research studies to participate in. I do not know um, on individual studies if they exclude individuals that have Down syndrome or not. So our, I guess they were suggesting we get it versus Sloan getting it to protect her since the child vaccine is not out and thought of until in well, the summer. Uh, yeah, so that's, okay, so obviously the adults that are on the, so adults are going to have probably um, access to it before other individuals. And so the CDC published um, about a week ago their advisory on who, um, who should receive the vaccine. Um, I hate to call it a hierarchy, but who they, who, what phase roll out people should potentially receive the vaccine. And right, as of right now, phase 1A is going to be first-line healthcare providers. So those that are in COVID units, ICUs, ERs, and long-term care, um, long-term care residents. And so we are at the very, 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 we're really not even at the beginning. It's just, um, you know, as of today, we have an advice. So, I but I, I would personally say, Anybody, I mean, again, clinically, and this is not about DSL, but in my opinion, anybody that is on the call tonight, if you haven't received your flu vaccine, please receive your flu vaccine. There's no contraindication unless you've had certain healthcare, health conditions to not receive a flu vaccine and make sure that your children are vaccinated, in my opinion. Um, two quick things too, uh, the global, Foundation is also advocating directly to the CDC to make sure that uh, those with Down syndrome are considered high risk and are considered um, will be at the top of that list when the high risk um, folks start. They're also trying to push, and Wes, I don't know if this is if they're too late getting this or not, but they're trying. They were telling us yesterday they were trying to get group homes added to long term facilities because, again, it's the same type of situation. Yeah, um, that's. It, um, yeah, so unfortunately, that hasn't played out as of yet. And obviously, there's always, besides uh, medical data, there's always a lot of politics. So I can't comment on that yet. Right. Um, and I also and shared my mom's group, you guys. I just shared um, Down syndrome of Pittsburgh had a, a town hall similar to this with multiple doctors talking about COVID and Down syndrome as well. And I think the a couple of them are at CHOP so that they had some insight on children and the heart uh, condition was specifically asked, Amy. So I thought of you because um, I didn't hear the whole answer. I got interrupted listening to that earlier today, but I know that somebody asked specifically about the heart um, effects and if there'd been any research on that. So um, I posted that there on the mom's page if you all want to listen to that um, as well. And then as far as programming, Wes and I talked about this as we planned our budget for 2021. You know, again, if, if we can make sure that our staff is vaccinated and anybody who is going to be with children at our children's programming are vaccinated, we would probably offer that to our parents' decision at that point, whether they send their members to, you know, a summer program, if we can do it and that kind of thing. But that's all going to be deciding as we go, as we're doing now, so. Anybody else have questions? New. Well, again, I would put a plug in to say, you know, keep um, I, I keep keep your family members involved um, with the online programming, and that is a great pivot and a great success. And even after pandemic, we are probably going to have some on, um, online services to provide because we realize that. 
Um, there are times that our members cannot um, get to our building. And so to provide accessibility um, and to kind of um, bridge the gap that sometimes is present, we are probably going to move forward with continuing to provide those services and many kudos to our staff for that pivot because um, uh, Ms. Wright, I think you were not alone in thinking that um, it, 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 it was a, um, a good and great thing that our staff was able to provide. And so I'm glad Jill was able to participate. Um, you know, I would watch for email and newsletter and um, all of the updates that we usually give because things do change. We tried to provide ADA services as long as we could in-house and we had to change based on what was going on, not only to protect our members, but protect our staff. So just know that things can change. And so we will try our best to provide in-person services because we also know that in-person services are vital for our members. And socialization is vital for our members. Um, and then if no one has any other, obviously Julie and I are always accessible. Mm -hmm. um, if you need to reach out, please reach out to us. Um, and we will try to um, get back to you in a timely manner. And um, you know, it's, it's amazing that our staff has been able to provide services, fundraise to the ability that they could this year um, and just know at the end of this pandemic, there is still going to be Down Syndrome in Louisville that is able to provide services to your family members, to our members, to your family, because we also know family services go beyond just providing members to members, uh, services to members. And so we're going to be here. We're, we're, we've, we've had to make hard decisions and we'll continue that to make more hard, some hard decisions, but at the end of the day, we are going to be able to provide services long term to to those that we serve. Yeah, and um, I'll just add again a shout out to all of you guys as our community too, because you know it wouldn't work if we didn't have people showing up and engaging in, in all of these programmings and reaching out to us and then to each other as well. So um, one of the things that I'm working on, I know it came up in the mom's group, but with this new database is that we could eventually provide a directory for those who opt in um, so that our families can really look closely at families that might be a lot like them or have the same type, types of diagnoses or issues like that. Um, and that's coming soon. It's coming soon. I keep pushing for it. Um, but until then, you know, I mean, the, the moms group is just a, a wonderful community and I hope that everybody feels comfortable reaching out and asking questions there, letting us know if you know of a family in the hospital, if you know of a family who needs food on the table, um, we want to be here for that as well. We have a family support fund um, that's new, so we need to raise funds for that as well, but um, I definitely don't want anyone to not feel supported at this time, so please, um, you know, let us know if you need support, share with us those who do, um, and we want to be there for you. So um, on that note, I, we have a, a quick video. I'll share my screen again from our members that you don't want to miss. So let me... You guys see my screen there? Hey Julie. Yes. I don't think it's I don't think it's showing up the way you would like. Oh, okay. Hold on. You're not seeing it. Nope. Not the video. Well, shoot. Okay, sorry. Try 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 <laughs> try maximizing the uh, presentation again. There you go. Okay. There it goes. Let me do it again. All right. Are you seeing a video? Yep. Okay. Thank you. 
They just wanted us to share the little Christmas message to everybody we were talking to tonight. So um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, again, the questions don't or comments don't end here. If you need us, you know how to find um, all of us here at DSL. And we're here, here to help and here to support and appreciate all of your support so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Good ending, Willa. We all end with a heart. <laughs> Good Thank night. Thank you all. <laughs> Good night.